Demon1 was considered by many to be the best player in the world last year. When it was announced that he and Ethan would be joining NRG's championship winning core, many teams in America likely accepted that they would be playing for second. It was certainly a shocker for everyone when Energy failed to make the second out of three possible international events this year, and didn't even make playoffs for their own region. So what could have changed for Demon1 since joining NRG? Why does this performance seem so much worse than last year? And where should the NRG roster go from here to fix their problems? In this video, we're going to compare the old Demon1 to the new Demon1 by looking thoroughly at his gameplay from before and after joining NRG. We're also going to take a look at some of his stats from last year and compare them to his stats this year to fully understand the reason behind changes in his gameplay. And don't worry, I'm not going to be comparing ACS or anything like that. What the? Okay, what the? We're only interested in uncovering the cold hard truth behind Energy's problems, and it's possible that some of these problems go way further back than the current iteration of the roster, so stay tuned until the end. While he was on EG, Demon1 was an absolute monster. He would win rounds that looked completely unwinnable on a nightly basis. Just watch this clip on Fracture, where he pulls off the clutch against Loud. But shortly after joining NRG, his performance seems night and day compared to his former self. And overall, he's not able to pull off as many moments as he did before. It's easy to say that he's just watched, but the real truth is never that simple. Despite still playing Jet on most maps this year, his role has drastically changed since joining NRG. Now you're probably wondering how that's even possible. He played an Entry Duelist on EG, and he's still playing Entry Duelists on NRG, right? Well, that's not entirely true because roles are not that clear cut. We know that Entry Duelists usually take a huge number of first engagements for their team, which is either a first blood or a first death. For example, when we look at Loud's stats from Champs last year, you can tell that Aspas played a hard entry role for Loud. This is a graph showing the number of first engagements each player on Loud took during Champs last year. Aspas has by far the most at 152 first bloods or first deaths. Proportionally, he took 29% of all first engagements for Loud, which is significantly more than everyone else. Aspas has proven time and time again that he excels at the solo entry role, and that's always been the role he's been most comfortable at. He's been able to carry this over to Leviathan, and in the Americas season so far, Aspas is still taking a meaningful majority of first engagements for Lev. Aspas is playing the same role that he's been comfortable on all along, so that's likely why he's still performing at the same high level that he was before. But when we look at EG's first engagement stats from last year, it becomes obvious that Demon1 had never excelled at playing that same solo hard entry role. On EG, Demon1 took a total of 110 first engagements for his team, while Giacomo and Bustio both had similar numbers at 114 and 103. Compared to having one hard entry like Aspas, the burden of risk taking and entry fragging was spread evenly across three different players on EG throughout their entire map pool. This was the playstyle of the team that won the 2023 championship, and what earned Demon1 the best player in the world title to begin with. However, since joining NRG, Demon1 has been expected to fulfill the role of a solo entry as a duelist on every single map, which is already something he wasn't necessarily doing for EG. But there's even more to it when we look at the stats. Demon1 has taken a whopping 145 first engagements for NRG this season, with the second most first engagements coming from Victor at only 89. This means that Demon1 has literally taken 35% of all first engagements for NRG, which is not even something that Aspas was ever expected to do. This definitely shows that something is clearly wrong with NRG's system, as it feels like they're expecting Demon1 to do the impossible, when he wasn't even known for being that type of player to begin with. On top of that, when we look at the clutch stats from Champs last year, you can see that Demon1 actually played out the second most clutches out of all players on EG, only playing two fewer clutches than Calm, who is known to be their main clutcher. Seeing Giacomo and Bustio at the bottom of this list, with the fewest clutches played, proves that they were seriously contributing a lot to entrying. Demon1 definitely also contributed to entrying, but this should give you a fuller picture of Demon1's full value as a player. 
He's not necessarily a super entry like Aspas, but more of a flex player who can contribute to entry fragging when needed, and also excels in slower late round scenarios, where there are a lot more opportunities for his playstyle and aiming style to shine. This starts to become super obvious when you look at exactly how EG were using him in their strats last year, even on maps like Ascent, where he was always the solo jet duelist. Pay close attention to Demon 1's positioning throughout these clips I'm about to show you. We can see that EG really liked to set him up with an op on attack, again, despite being the solo duelist playing Jet. In this round against Loud, EG invests utility to insert Demon 1 into B main, and then leave him to work potential picks, while the rest of his team rotates out and takes control elsewhere. The attack op setup occurred multiple times throughout their championship run, and you can tell that it was a core part of their game plan with Demon 1, which clearly worked well as a mix-up. This shows that EG were confident in having other players entry onto sites, which the stats clearly showed earlier, and EG were able to open Demon 1 up to play his strengths as a calm aimer in the lurk position. But these types of plays did not only happen when Demon 1 had an op. Against Paper Rex at Masters, you can see EG working Demon 1 up mid and leaving him there to find opportunities by himself, similar to a conventional lurker. It's actually Jogamo on Omen who's entering into tree to create possible timings for Demon 1, and they do this again in round 5 by using the Silva Drone to get Demon 1 up market. Then, the rest of EG actually work back to B main, and it's all 4 other players who act as the main entry creating pressure for Demon 1 to find timings by himself in market. The same types of plays were used again during the champs grand final. They set up Demon 1 in market by himself. Then, everyone else works back to B main, and while everyone is entering through the site, Demon 1 knows how to use that pressure to find opportunities to open up the round further. So EG were actually using Demon 1 a lot on attack as a solo lurk or inserted player, and the rest of the team would be comfortable entering to create timings for him, rather than the other way around. Again, I'm not saying that Demon 1 can't do a good job as an entry, because we still saw EG run a ton of successful normal executes with Demon 1 leading the way onto site. It's just that he often received more help from his teammates last year, who could also be the ones to open up rounds. The burden wasn't completely on him to get those first bloods or openings, which in turn allowed him to play out more late round scenarios where he also provides a lot of value. In this clip, Bustio is seen hanging around in B main late into the round. Jagamo TP's backside B and creates so much pressure for EG for them to be able to go out onto A for free. Now, Demon 1 can go really crazy in the late round when utility is low and it's all just straight up gunfights for him. The difference is clear when we compare the clips we just saw of how EG are opening up rounds as a team with how NRG look like today. On NRG, it seems like Demon 1 is thrown to the wolves a lot more than he was on EG and just expected to make some magic happen. What a commitment. And a peak is oh. again. They're trying to get a move on here. Fast this util. It's all overwhelming here. But and a swarm will land. Clearing through with a util. Demon 1, Satchel and Forward still trying to take a fight and once again plucked out of the sky. Okay, I know there are some mollies and other utility being thrown by their opponents in some of those clips, but there's clearly still a lack of forward momentum from the rest of NRG. Like in this round, Demon 1 flies over the KO molly, gets a huge entry, and even dashes across wide, which should guarantee the immediate trade. But the rest of NRG are just too slow to swing out of A main that KO gets one more kill before dying. Here's another execute where Demon 1 just dashes out by himself, and everyone else just gets stuck in B main. When he dies for free and no one else makes it out onto site, the round is immediately in a terrible state. I know there's a lot of criticism towards Ethan's IGLing, but strats and calls don't even come into play unless you can show the other team that you can all take initiative and shoot them back together. NRG just don't have that same sense of team-wide playmaking that 2023 EG had, and I can prove to you that it's NRG's team fundamentals more than anything and not the actual strats being called. The truth is that NRG actually do run strats that used to work for Demon 1 on EG. Here's a round on Split where they insert Demon 1 into vents and try to get everyone back to A main to create pressure. But Victor peaks way too early before the rest of his team can get there. And then there's no pressure for Demon 1's lurk, which is just another free kill for 100 Thieves. Even more damning evidence is NRG executing that same 4-1 B split on Ascent. 
with Demon 1 in mid and 4 players in B main. But Demon 1's teammates on NRG are super slow in B main and have not created a real threat. Before you know it, Demon 1 dies on the solo lurk. Jogamo is the one that kills him here and obviously he's very familiar with this type of play, but the rest of NRG didn't do anything to make him consider rotating further and Jogamo never had a reason to even glance at the minimap. Demon 1 could have actually died to a lot of different off angles on this peak, and nobody else on NRG would have had any say in the matter. These strats that used to work on EG no longer work on NRG, and it's because of terrible coordination and a lack of team-wide initiative, rather than the actual calls or IGLing. If we go back to that first clip where Demon 1 clutches out on Fracture, we can actually rewind and see exactly how he got into this position in the first place. EG starts this entire sequence with a very aggressive 4-man push to retake B main. All 4 players work together to get the trade down, and Demon 1 just happened to be the one left alive out of everyone after the dust settles. Because Demon 1 wasn't just thrown to the wolves in this situation, and all of EG fought together, he actually has an opportunity to play out a clutch and completely destroys Loud in the final 1v2. It's not a comfortable plant. He's gonna get it down for now. Closing the gap though, you gotta respect this man. This should make it clear that the old EG's playstyle is vastly different from the current NRG, and as a result, Demon 1 is just not able to find the same type of impact. Now, the twist in all of this is that the problem kind of started way before Demon 1 and Ethan even joined the NRG roster. If we actually go back to NRG's infamous loss against Billy Billy Gaming, we can see a lot of moments where NRG throws situations because they just aren't able to set up fights together. Here's some of my analysis on that match, which showcases their problems with team fighting. In this round on Lotus, NRG are in a post-plant situation on A. Take a look at how disjointed NRG are in this setup. Crashies is fighting stairs by himself, while Victor is back sight by himself. Both simultaneously lose their 1v1s while Artis is taking the idea of his mollies a bit too seriously. The only reason they win this round is because Som decides to make a huge play and fight for sight before Billy Billy can tap the bomb. He kills all 4 players by himself, and although Finesse was kind of helping by holding his right, I would have still liked to see Finesse in a more active spot, especially since he doesn't even have any mollies left to play the bomb. In round 11, NRG gain another great opportunity by walking up B while Billy Billy have pushed through A main and are again in a 5v3 scenario. But Finesse pushes through upper by himself and Crashies is still lurking around in A main. It's essentially just a 3v3 on site when Billy Billy Gaming tried to disrupt the plant and suddenly the round turns into a 2v2 when the bomb wasn't even down yet. The timings are now long expired as they can easily deduce exactly where Crashies and Finesse are and another round becomes thrown. These issues with fighting together caused them to lose against Billy Billy last year and continue to carry over into the current season. In my opinion, this all started when Victor first role swapped at the start of the 2023 season and started playing agents like Viper or Killjoy. This was vastly different from what he was originally known for, which was his super aggressive entry on agents like Phoenix, Raze, and Neon. Late last year, NRG went back to playing Victor as an entry on more maps, and this worked pretty well because this actually got them to Masters and Champs, but this year they went back on that change and put Victor back on agents like Cypher or Killjoy to make room again for Demon 1's agent pool. Victor is now put in these lurk positions on attack when he used to go head to head with players like Aspas as one of the top duelist entries. One of the most aggressive players in the world at one point is now reduced to playing passively and playing his cam and trips the entire round. The interesting thing is that Demon 1's playstyle resembles Ye's playstyle in a bunch of different ways. Both players excelled on an agent like Chamber, who enabled them to look for solo opportunities but also lurk around during certain setups. They both have calm and consistent aiming styles, which is better for scenarios where utility is low and there's less chaos going around. And both Demon 1 and Ye are decent as jet entries, but truly thrive when they can work alongside other primary space creators and play out some late round scenarios. On EG, Demon 1 had Boostio and Jagamo to help create space, and on Old Optic, Victor was the one doing it for Ye. So this leads to the big question, what can NRG do at this point to fix things? The big thing that they need to address is this massive discrepancy in first engagements. We've already alluded to some solutions, but honestly, putting Victor back on entry is not going to immediately fix everything. 
They already tried this on a couple maps near the end of stage one, and although it certainly worked to a degree, if the entire team doesn't start to take more initiative across the board, then they still won't be able to win consistently. A really good example of someone else who is in a similar position to Demon 1 is Cryo. Cryo as a player is also very similar to Demon 1 and Ye, in that he was a calm aimer, excelled at chamber, and was definitely decent at entrying on jet, but was never a super entry like Aspas. Cryo was also a top player in 2022, but seemed to fall off tremendously after joining 100 Thieves in 2023. 100 Thieves had a very lackluster performance that year, and Cryo was getting washed allegations all over the place. But look at how first engagements on 100 Thieves were being distributed that year. Cryo was taking 35% of all first engagements for that team, and I swear I didn't plan this at all, but look at how similar this graph is to 2024 Energy's first engagements. Honestly, it's pretty crazy how similar these graphs are. Well, we know that 100 Thieves just won Stage 1, and Cryo has been playing at an MVP level again. It's super interesting when you look at the agents he's playing for 100 Thieves now. Do these agents look familiar to you? They should, because this is exactly what Demon 1 was playing on EG, but with a little bit of Gecko to stay updated to the current meta. Now that 100 Thieves are America's champions in 2024, this is what their first engagements graph looks like. This is so much more evenly distributed, and I know it also means that Cryo is playing a little less duelist than before, but it still means that the entire team is more comfortable with taking initiative compared to before. 100 Thieves and Cryo are just living proof that Energy can fix their problems and get Demon 1 back in championship form. If Energy can get Victor back to primary entry, get Demon 1 into more late round scenarios, and get the entire team to come together and take more initiative, I think Energy can definitely make a comeback in Stage 2. Hopefully they don't just throw more money at the situation, but I guess you really never know how that will turn out. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Little fun fact is that I actually worked with Coach Zix on CLG for a brief period during 2017, and we're gonna break down 100 Thieves Stage 1 run in the next video, so make sure to subscribe for when that comes out. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.